Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Second Sunday, my little monthly broadcast that I bring to you guys every month. I am Jessica Alstrom, and you are in my community. So welcome to the Quantum Revolution community. If you are new to our community, um, welcome. Make yourself at home. You'll see all kinds of fun quantum wonderland activity going on here. This month, Second Sunday is awesome. It's a, I'm, I'm excited. The energy that is happening right now is, is finally, finally, it's all coming together. It's all coming together. Everything that we have been purging and working through this month is coming together and we're entering a new phase. So welcome to the community um, and welcome to that halfway point of the ascension process where you can really kind of step in and see how far you've come. And that's really what I want you guys to pay attention to in this broadcast. This broadcast is all about looking at the past, present, and future and stepping into this now moment. You know, the, the title of this month's um, second Sunday is Becoming the Lion. And to me, what a lion is, as far as the representation of the spiritual meaning, is this very neutral, calm, yet very powerful leader. And that is really what we are as our higher selves. Our higher self is not excited beyond belief. It's not always living in a state of ecstasy. Our true higher self, is very noble and very neutral, very peaceful, very much at ease with its own existence. And as this push and this purge happens, that's been happening since about 2011 now, we've noticed that what's happening is we're getting to the point where ego is like waving the white flag, like, I just can't do this anymore, I'm so confused. Everything that I'm trying is not working. And finally, that leader can step forward, the higher self can step forward through the body and, and really become the, the leader of your life. And that's what this month is about. It's about looking at what you have survived and deciding if you want to keep being the survivor. Do you want to keep feeling like you're on that desert island all alone? Do you want to feel like the things that are inside of you that you've been carrying for a really long time? Do you want to keep carrying those things? Do you want to keep moving in a state of struggle? You know, the human body gets very addictive to um, pain and pleasure. And unfortunately, for our awareness, sometimes we can get really addicted to survival. We can get really addicted to pain. We can get addicted to drama. We can get addicted to circumstances that are not going our way. And we have no idea that we're actually addicted to these things. Because basically what they do is they give us a sense of being alive. And for a really long time on this planet, that is really what kept us moving, was this constant state of desire to survive, constant state of a desire to survive. But what if you didn't have that desire to survive? What if you had more of a choice of what your thriving life looked like? And when I say desire is going to move to choice, is because this hungry, high level of necessity, drama-embodied life that we've been living in is going to start to come to a halt. And in 2020, what you're going to start noticing is you have a choice. You are working with your ego in understanding how to focus in your reality to create and bend time with your reality. You're going to be moving in and out of parallel realities that are based in intention and choice. You're going to be playing in the quantum field of possibilities and using your toolbox that has always been inside of you to help awaken, heal, and turn this world into a thriving community of unity. Sounds far-fetched, but it's literally within your grasp right now. It's within all of our grasp right now. But we are really at this new level of understanding ourselves. You know, I'm about three weeks into my I Am workshop, which is basically the biggest body of work that I've ever committed to and delivered in a workshop form. And basically what I'm bringing to light is the fact that we are, in our true essence, the I Am. And the I Am knows exactly who it is and why it's here. It knows what its toolbox contains and how it can help shift this planet back into light, back into unity, back into understanding. And on the other side of that is that first seven years of disconnect from ourselves, our disconnect from our joy, from our gifts, from our knowing, from our, our intellect that is more super conscious than unconscious. And what happens is when those first seven years were kind of split away from our higher selves, we begin searching outside of ourselves, constantly hungry for attention and understanding and connection. So this last weekend in our I Am training, we went deep into addiction. And addiction is all about how we survive 
the feeling of disempowerment. It is what we use to medicate and soothe and cover up a feeling of disempowerment. So anywhere that you're in your life still feeling a level of disempowerment, you're probably using some sort of behavior, circumstance, medication, right, to kind of numb that feeling. And what's happening as this, the energy pressurizes you, and that's what's happening, all of the eclipse energy and the retrogrades and now this beautiful Lionsgate energy that is literally almost at its completion phase as of tomorrow, is really pressurizing you to step into the fact that you are a diamond. And that diamond is here to shine. And that diamond is here to lead by being the light. And of course we're going to be in the dark because that's where we shine the, bre the best. That's where we know ourselves the best. That's why we've survived what we've survived. But literally, the game is shifting. The game on Earth, the holographic game of survival, is shifting. Now, you all have a choice in that. Do you want to still play this game of survival, right? Or do you want to step in and be the leader of this royal remembrance? So one thing that I noticed working with thousands of lightworkers all over this planet is that whenever I really tap into their true soul essence, there's this noble remembrance of this royal energy that's present. It's beyond what, I, what can be imagined here on earth. It is this stoic, peaceful, calm understanding of itself. It is royal. And that is the best definition that I can give when I really connect with the true light worker. And what's a light worker? Someone who brings light to the dark. Someone who shows up someone who is constantly, constantly wanting and desiring to be of service on this planet, no matter what's happening in their personal lives, no matter how much they're suffering. A light worker is someone who has taken their pain and turned it into purpose, who gets up every single day with the desire to be of help and to help change this planet. And that is all of us. And it is time that we start acting like a royal group and a community rather than these suffering empaths that are afraid of our own shadows and from the world. Because if you understand the purpose of the metaphorical energy of the lion, it is one who knows their own strength and one that leads by example. So as we all step into this power that we're sitting in, that we've always had access to, it's really just a matter of making peace within ourselves and letting go of what we can let go of and stepping forward into the unknown with neutrality, with excitement, with understanding, without having a necessarily a perfect roadmap of where we're going. We have a sense of our heart is beginning to open. We are in the fourth phase of awakening called I am love. So everything that's been happening to you guys this year is to break the chains that are around your heart. Literally, have you noticed how full circle you're coming with everything? How you're really like literally replaying certain, certain actions and certain manifestations of the past in a new time and concept? You're rendezvousing with old people and memories and places and things to show yourself who you are in the now moment. Because the future is now. Whatever we do right now, within ourselves on a daily basis is what's going to build our future, bottom line. No one is gonna come save us. You know, the ascension is not going to turn us into something else. We are literally here to decide and choose what our future looks like with the choices, with the thoughts, with the feelings, with the remembrance that we have right now. See, right now we have this opportunity to keep building the past through our thoughts, feelings, and awareness. Or we have an opportunity to step back and look at the big picture and decide and choose who we want to be. Who we want to be, um, who do we want to be for our children? Who do we want to be for our grandchildren? What do we want to leave behind? What is your legacy? What are you doing right now to create that? How are you supporting yourself so that you can show up as that? Because what we do right now determines where we will be this time next year. Have you guys noticed that with the eclipse energy and the Lionsgate energy, we literally go this full circle expression and we see, we kind of rendezvous with exactly where we were this time last year. And it's almost like it's an opportunity to reconcile ourselves, to know ourselves more, 
to remember ourselves more, to use our toolbox more. Because as we shift away from the old paradigm of ego leading the body and making those choices based in survival and pain of the past, we're integrating. We're integrating our higher selves into our whole lives. We're starting to feel more neutral. We're starting to feel more alive by just being instead of desire. Most of the time in the past, we have felt the most alive when we have been in desire. That's how we know we are alive. That's why the brain gets literally addicted to survival. Because when you're angry, you feel alive, right? When you're struggling, you feel alive. And when things are just kind of moving around, you're not necessarily participating in your daily experience. You're in a kind of, you know, autopilot zone that takes you from moment to moment to moment. And we resist the present moment because there's pain in the present moment. And the pain in the present moment is coming from the past. So what we usually do is we try to jump to the future. I want to jump to the future where it looks better, where I have more money, where I have the relationship all figured out, where my body is healed. I want to jump to the future. But what happens is when we have that mindset of jumping to the future where everything feels better, all we're actually doing is creating the past in the future from the present moment. So when we do that, what we do is we let ourselves down. And then we get upset with ourselves and we get upset with the people around us and we say, why does this keep happening over and over again? Well, if you're taking this I am training with me right now. What you're realizing is that we are literally spiritual beings playing virtual reality as humans. And in this virtual reality, we have simulations. We have programs. We have patterns. And as long as we quantumly focus on those patterns, those programs, and those simulations, all we actually do is reinstate them. Whether we look at it negatively or we look at it positively, if I give any attention to an old program, I basically reinstall it. Now, if you've ever watched someone play a video game or you've played a video game, you know how frustrating it is to be stuck in one level, right? And although life is exactly the same as any video game that is set up as virtual reality, this life experience is a learning game, which means this virtuality, virtual reality learns you. It learns your weaknesses. It learns your strengths. It learns the secrets that you bury inside of you. It knows your unconscious mind. It knows your super conscious mind. And it is literally giving you the exact game that you are either focused on or in resistance to. So when we're in resistance to our game or our patterns or our program or our life, then what happens by default, we reinstall the process. And as we reinstall this process, what happens is we think that we're in a new level. We think that we're in a new game because we have maybe surrounded ourselves with new people, places, and things. But within usually three months, we're attracting all the same heartache, all the same pain, all the same issues, and we scratch our head and say, but wait, I've changed so many things in my life, yet this feels the same. So what I'm asking my students all over the world is to look for the patterns that feel the same. Because the only way that we can actually shift the program and step into the opportunity that is literally at our fingertips right now, because how it works is you have free will. You have the choice to keep playing your game over and over again or step into the new updated software. The new updated software is the new ascension process. It is, this is a learning game, right? So it learns through desire, it learns through actions, it learns through behaviors, and it, like, just like your phone or just like your, pro, your computer or your video games, you'll get a software update, won't you? About every three months, you'll notice that you get a software update on your phone. Now, it is your opportunity to choose the update. Most of us go, oh, this is so annoying. It's, I'm going to change everything. And, but we don't, know, we don't understand that taking that software update is actually us saying yes to a new virtual reality where we have more choice, where we have more opportunity, where the work that we've done on ourselves exists, that we have access to now. But it feels scary. It feels unknown. We don't know that game. But as long as you're having an Earth experience, as a spiritual being, in the holographic universe of Earth, which we're all playing in, as long as you choose to be here, this is how it's set up. It only gets easier 
when you live in the present moment and make the choice to let go of what needs to let go of and take the upgrades, take those new software updates, because in it, you're going to be the revised version of you that you have been working so hard to create. Look at what you've done in your life. Look at what you've had to purge. Look at what you've surrendered to. Look at what you've let go of. There is a new you waiting on the other side of that veil that is so ready to download within your body, right? And you get to take all those software updates and you get to take all of those new revisions of yourself. But you have this choice and the ego fears change. The ego identity that has protected you and acted as your security system in 3D for so long doesn't want to give up that control. It doesn't want to give you up. It says, no, 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 we have to keep playing this way. We have to keep playing this program until we beat the program. But the program is unbeatable. The program of the old paradigm of 3D is unbeatable unless you step out and start to see how it's all set up and start to see through your eyes of your higher self and feel through your heart, not your mind. See, that's a big game changer this year you guys are going to notice, is that you're going to be thinking a lot less, and you're going to be feeling a lot more. And your feelings are going to feel like thoughts, but it's a higher level of you integrated into the body, where now the brain and the heart are starting to live in coherence, right? The, this software that is your nervous system is beginning to heal. Your body is beginning to update. Right? You're getting all of these new software updates. But you've got to take them. You've got to say, you know what? I'm ready to be the highest version of myself. I am ready to take all of this work that I've been doing and all of these classes and all of these certifications and all of this awareness training. And I am ready to start living from the heart. And what you're going to notice this year is this year is the year of possibilities. This is the three year. This is the year of Never before have you had this many opportunities. Never before have you had this many possibilities. Never before have you had this kind of choice. Have you guys noticed that? That this year is just, it's just happening. And just like a child, it can be very overwhelming. What do I choose? Which ones do I pick? You know, this feels exciting. This is what I've always wanted. But what I want you to do is really step into your royal energy and really get to a grounded place of neutrality before you make choices the rest of this year. Because just because choices are everywhere, doesn't mean that you're, you're wanting to take all of those choices. Because a lot of times, what you think you wanted from the old program is not actually what you want now. This new updated version of you doesn't need love from others. It doesn't need attention from others. It doesn't need money to feel safe. That's the old you. The new you is the abundance. It is the love, it is the security, it is home. But in order for you to start running that program, and we know that we, in order to access any program, it has to be run, which means you have to play it out. Can you play out and demonstrate in August, which is your power month, who you are as love? Can you, just by being you, you know, feel completely safe? Can you feel the abundance inside your toolbox, the wealth that exists from what you know and who you are? Because when I take my team and when I take my students on an awareness journey outside of this matrix program or outside of this virtual reality or on the other side of this bridge, what they realize is they never, ever, ever, ever felt unworthy. What they felt was disconnected. What they felt was disempowered. And when you feel disempowered and when you feel disconnected, your ego tries to identify what that means and it must be that you're unworthy. But I've never ever met a, a light worker that's higher self actually believed that they were unworthy. They were just disappointed, they were rejected, they were abandoned, they were disassociated, they were literally separate from themselves. All pain is separation of self, okay? That goes for your body, that goes for your relationships, that goes for your money, that goes for time. If you are disconnected 
from your relationships, there will be pain. And it will feel like, it will feel like grief, it will feel like anger, it will feel like frustration, because disconnection, um, imagine this, and this is the sample that I give my students, is, is how frustrating is it when your Wi-Fi won't connect, okay? Like you're trying to get this email written, or you're trying to get on social media and post something, and you're trying to get something live, and you can't connect. What does that feel like? Well, now you know what you feel like with your higher self. If you feel that disconnect, that's going to pull you down into a lower vibration. But you guys, we were taught from zero to seven to disconnect. Disconnect to be a good girl. Disconnect to listen to what I'm saying, to feel what I'm feeling. So we handed over our connection with our higher self, probably by the time we were seven, and we began to live a life of connection through others, connection and, and safety with others and things and places. And we began to insert control issues around being connected. Therefore, if we weren't connected, we weren't safe. If we weren't connected, we weren't abundant. But connected to what? Haven't you guys noticed that every time you've ever had to feel connected outside of you, you've always been let down? You've always been disrespected? You've always been used? You've always been rejected? Because our job here is to connect with ourselves. And their job is to connect with themselves. So while they're trying to connect with themselves, they're, le they're letting you down. And the game is so set up so perfectly that the people you love the most have opposing wounds, which means your wound is going to oppose someone else's wound. And your wound that you're carrying from trauma, from whatever it is, is literally going to trigger the person that you love the most. And that wound is going to trigger them. And the example I give my students is, Usually in my twin flame relationships or my soulmate relationships, I find someone who has a commitment issue and someone who has an abandonment issue. One person can't quite commit and the other one is constantly feeling abandoned. And those two people fall in love. And what it's coming from is higher self is saying, you are only here to connect with yourself. That's it. That was your job from day one. Now, we all played this game so we could get lost in the game, so we could wake up from the game. And now that we're waking up from the game, we're realizing that even when we do get the connection from others, it doesn't satisfy us the same way. When we do get the material possessions that we've been craving and desiring and working so hard in physical reality to attain, don't actually feel as good as we thought they were going to feel. Our imagination always feels better than reality. Because in your imagination is where you truly, truly connect you. That's why it feels so amazing in there. That's why it, when you're in your workshop, when you're in your visions, how much bigger your energy field feels when you're working to manifest that house versus getting the keys. You get the keys and you're like, what's next? If I can create this, what else can I create? And the only way that we're going to actually get through the game so that we can start coding the game and start building the game and start you know, living in the game as we choose versus a default program of survival is to move into that state of neutrality. That is where all of your power is. And you've been hearing this for years and years and years in the new age train is everybody talks about this thing called surrender. But surrender to the ego is pure weakness. It's giving up. It's failure. So it has an opposing belief connected to it. And belief is vibration. So when we are forced into surrender or we decide that it's time to let go or it's time to move on and we're not doing it from some addictive place, we think that we failed. And actually what has happened is we have basically let go of an old program and we're stepping into our software update. Because you guys notice that every time you've hit a rock bottom or something tragic has happened in your life, it's always been a shortcut. It's always been a door to something else. See, the ego doesn't really know what you want and who you are. It just knows how to keep you safe and survive. It has filled your head with this, this idea that you are this program. And when you are the participant of your program, you actually can't control anything. That's why you have control issues. That's why you work so hard to control other people and other things is because you feel so unsafe in the game. But if you just step out of the game, and, you know, look at the, the movie The Matrix for a few minutes, because it was, if you look at the metaphor 
of what that is. What was Neo? Non-emotional observer, right? He was observing himself in the game, and that's how he got his power back. He did not get his power from fighting in the game, because when he was fighting in the game, it felt real. It felt like everything that was coming at him was literally happening. It wasn't virtual reality. It was only when he stepped out that he began to learn how the game works. He would step out, he would learn, and he would step in. He would step out. And remember, the metaphor of this movie is so cool, because remember how intoxicating the game was. How in the beginning, he didn't want to step out. He didn't want to lose his life. He didn't want any part of this, this nonsense of stepping out. He wanted to make his life work, which is what we've been doing for 30, 40, 50 years, is we have been working really hard in this game trying to make this game work. But this game is learning you. This game is choosing, based on what your weaknesses are, what to give you in three months from now. Because it is designed to keep you a sedative, comfortable slave. And I know I'm getting very, like, matrixy on you. But you guys, from a, an intuitive perspective, when all I see around me is ones and zeros, are you the zeros or are you the ones? Are you the one? Are you the creator? Or are you all the 99% empty space around you? The 99% empty space that makes up your atoms? Because it is that one focus, it is that one choice that makes up the universe to play its game. It is you. You are the one in your universe. And when you start to count on you, listen to you, govern you, then what happens is this old game starts to fall away. And all this hard work that you've been doing for years and years and years and years and years to, you know, personal development and spiritual development and meditation practices and techniques and technology, aren't you ready to actually be able to enjoy all of those things, to live out those things, to lead in those things? to teach others, because we have the light workers, you guys, our toolbox is getting so big that it could literally explode. I have met people who have been doing nothing but spiritual study for 20 years now. And I look at their life and I'm like, I am so in awe of all of this practice. But where, where's the fruit? Where, where are you bearing the fruit of all of your hard work? And they say, well, every time I finish a course, Something happens in my, my relationship and I fall out of alignment. Every time I get a certification over here and I spend this week at the silent retreat, then I come home to money problems. Sound familiar, right? Because what's happening is you're trying to beat the game in the game. You're trying to win the game in the program and it is unwinnable. This game is unwinnable inside the game. You have to step out, right? And the best metaphor that I have for this is you know, I had the opportunity to be with a lot of children this summer, and they loved gaming. But they didn't like gaming the way that we used to play games. If you guys remember, like, if you're 40 like me, you know, you, you've been playing video games where you had to, like, beat the game, and it took you all summer. Well, not my kids. What my kids do is they get frustrated with the game, they stop the game, and they go watch someone on YouTube who has beat the game, and they get all that person's cheat codes and those hacks and they download that information and then they bring it back into the game. They bring all of those cheat codes back into the game and then they beat the game in a week. And I'm like, what's the fun of that? And they go, because we can win the game. That's all we're wanting to do is win this game. And I'm like, this is exactly what we're doing here. You know, if you're doing any sort of quantum training and if you understand quantum physics, it is literally the concept of how the entire universe is being built through imagination through being focal pointed, right? So I'm creating my reality based on what I'm looking at. And if I can look at something, I'm going to make it real. Now, if I look at things I don't want all the time, then basically I keep building worlds. I keep building realities out of the things that I don't like. So then I keep going back into the game and trying to learn how to beat the game in the game. Your best cheat code is this Lionsgate portal right here, you guys. It is basically saying, step out. Step out. Reclaim your intuitive power. Reclaim yourself. Accept your software updates, guys. Yes, it's going to change you. Yes, it may change your relationship. Yes, it may change your money situation. But what do you have to lose? Aren't you exhausted? You know, again, like I said, ego is waving its white flag. It's like, oh, just 
not working anymore. It's not, it's the things that I used to love and the addictions that I used to have are just, they don't even feel fun anymore. I'm just doing them out of like convenience. Your ego is at the perfect, perfect, perfect place of surrender. It's saying, okay, uh, 30, 40 years, it's not working. You know, I've tried to rescue you. I've tried to save you. I've tried to keep you small. I've tried to, you know, make sure that you knew of everyone around you who didn't like you, including yourself, and I'm tired. And it is higher self's turn to really step in and say, okay, well, I don't know exactly where we're going based in what we want to create, but I know that all we are is creators. All we are is visionaries. And through imagination of our hearts and living through our hearts and become feelers versus thinkers, then all of a sudden, everything that we have been working on is going to start manifesting. And your job is not to take the first fruit that falls out of the tree. Your job is to hold yourself into a true, true, true understanding of your guidance system and saying, I'm not going to take the first relationship that pops up. You know, I am going to take time. You have this whole month, you guys. It's really cool how this month is set up energetically. This month energetically is set up to, to kind of slow you down. You know, it's like, you know, when your child is like running toward the pool and you're like, don't run, don't run. Like, this is what you're going to feel like. But in order for you to really accept the updates that are coming through right now and really amplify your intuition and really get all of those deadbolts off of your heart chakra, you're going to want to slow down, right? Don't take the low hanging fruit. Really, really decide because, you know, in survival, we have learned to professionally settle. We settle for relationships, jobs, opportunities. We settle for bullshit all the time because that's what's available. That's what we're manifesting at the moment. But you don't have to settle. This would be a really good month for you guys to practice not settling, to be the observer and say, hmm, well, if this opportunity is showing itself, let me see what else is coming. Let me see what else is showing up for me. Because usually what happens is if we take that first option, it's usually a response from an addiction sequence, right? Ooh, this feels good. This feels numbing. This feels like relief. This feels like rescuing. This feels like saving. You don't need to play that game anymore. But you're not going to know your software updates until you get to know them. And I know it's frustrating for me because we have these live TVs in our house. And every three months they get updates. And it takes me 30, 40 minutes to learn my TV again. And it's frustrating. But I will tell you that if I actually spend the time learning my new system, right, and being present in the moment and accepting the new downloads, that within 30, 30 minutes or 30 days, I know how this thing works again. And I'm not running an old system and an old pattern. Now, this happens every year, you guys. But we are moving into higher levels of awareness, especially as light workers. We are moving into awareness by observation, by practical action, and from demonstration. That is how we are moving in this awareness game. That's how self-realization happens. Self-realization does not happen in a book. It happens in your relationships, your life, your choices, your intentions. Self-realization is you being the byproduct of what you've learned, not what you've learned at all. You can learn everything and still be nowhere. So for August, your homework as a light worker, as a leader, as that royal remembrance of the lion energy that is all around you this month is don't settle. Really be with yourself. Be with your intentions. Be with your choices. Be with your sleep. Be with your thoughts, but be the observer of your thoughts. Be with your heart's desires and be with how your body feels in contrast of those desires. Be present. Because the one thing that happens when I see the idea of this lion energy is that the lion is not trying to be anything other than it is. It knows exactly who it is. It knows exactly how to show up. It knows how to lead. And it doesn't look around for questions, and it's not living in a state of survival, even though it is in a state of becoming, 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 because it too has to survive, but it doesn't worry about its survival. 
it is literally creating its life through its own tribe, which is your soul family. And your soul family has begun to show up. I know it has, because in 2014 was the migration of the soul family. So everybody started finding each other. And maybe you have found one or two people, but more is coming. More people who align with your belief systems, with your heart, with your soul, with your mission. That's going to be important because in 2020, it's going to be when the new schools are going to be formulated. The new money is going to come to the surface. The new food opportunities are going to come to the surface. And this migration that has happened over the last four or five years is getting everybody to this point. Because the Ascension says, okay, everybody has their new software. Everybody has their updates. Even those that are asleep, even those that are asleep have been embedded. The seeds have been implanted. That's why they're all coming to you saying, can you read my tarot cards? Can you give me a session? Can you help me? And you're saying, yes, I can help you. But I recommend that you guys help the ones who are reaching out to you from your new software update, not from your old ones. Because if you do help the awakened from your old software, they won't pay you, they won't appreciate your time, and they won't stick with it. And you're going, why? Because you're a byproduct of your past and like attracts like. And your old program says, I'm not supported. Your old program says that I'm not abundant. Your old program says, I am not free and I am not safe. So even in the light working game, the clients that are gonna show up for you in the old program are gonna be the ones that take advantage of you, just like everyone always has. And you think, well, wait, this is a totally different world. We're in the light working world but everybody still has to show up according to the game. Everyone still has to show up based on what you believe about yourself. Like attracts like. So take your software updates, and you know what I mean by that. It means stand in your truth of the now moment. Allow the feelings in your heart to be stronger than the thoughts in your head. Don't rush to take action. Feel into your choices. You have many, many choices. Take the thing, take the opportunity or thing that feels the scariest, yet the most rewarding. What feels the scariest, yet the most rewarding? Ego will say, we can't afford that, right? We can't do that right now. We're not in the right time. You've never been in more of a right time than right now. Don't listen to that. You are in the right time. You are in the right moment. This is your time. This is, you've already resurrected. You've already become, you're standing in the center point of this exact moment of the ascension when the heart says, I'm ready to lead. I'm ready to lead this world and I'm ready to show up. So by you loving yourself, you can let go of these personality sequences that you've had in the past that have kept you alive. The things that kept you alive in the past will not serve you where you're going. They will only slow you down. They will be like rocks in a backpack. So you have to let them go, you have to unpack them. So the best advice that I can give for August, of where we all are right now, collectively, is to be in a constant state of surrendering your old programs and stepping into the new software and getting to know yourself. Getting to know you. Getting to know who you've become and who you're becoming. Getting to know your new hopes, your new desires, your new outlook. You'll notice if you get really present that your new outlook is much more neutral. Much more neutral than excited. Much more obvious than totally freaked out. Things are obvious when you drop into the heart. The heart is the telepathic part of you, not your mind, not your brain. Your brain is not telepathic. Your brain is only, only a receiver and a perceiver so it can perceive and it can receive and that's it your brain thinks it knows other people but it thinks it knows other people based in the past it does not know anyone your heart knows everyone your heart is the one that is going to communicate with the entire world and bring you heart-centered relationships heart-centered money heart-centered foods and that's where we're all heading is the fourth awakening is I am love without any doubt and worry that you're worth it or that you deserve it or that it's free or that it's safe. 
Love has always equaled pain in the old program. So no matter how many times you fall in love, you get burned, right? That's how the program is set up. It is literally designed for you to fail. Fall in love, get hurt, right? Take risks, fail. Spend money, get, you know, get, get starving, get, you know, whatever. If I need to now go into debt. Oh, I ran out of money. Oh, this bank just said they would give me $30,000 in credit. Awesome. You're in the game, guys. You're in the game, so we have to step out. We have to step out and we step in. We step out and we step in. And when we step in, we come in from a, a state of neutrality and a more of an understanding of ourselves. And we don't settle. You know, I would much rather you guys, instead of picking that low hanging fruit, climb the tree. Find the ripest, the most juiciest one you can find because that is more of a representation of who you are. You're not that low hanging fruit anymore. You're not gonna let people treat you the way that you've allowed them to treat you in the past just so you could have a relationship or a friend. You don't need that anymore. But take this opportunity to be August, a representation of August as this is my software update. The eclipse, the retrogrades, the full moons, the new moons, everything that has literally happened has been update, 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 and purging you, pressurizing you like a diamond, firing your life so that you can grow from the ashes. Everything has been perfect and divine, but you have free will and you have choice. We've got a very big, very big year coming up next year. And I would like for our numbers to grow. And what I mean about numbers is those who are aware, those who are choosing their realities versus deliberately and unfortunately creating it from the past, choosing their point of attraction and showing up without settling. And when you get scared, you guys, and when you get lonely or when those old programs start to hit, because addiction is a, a very, very intoxicating experience, whether it's good or bad, it will pull you backwards and say, we're not ready. And your job is to say, all I have to do is step out of this virtual reality for five minutes and take a look at my timeline and take a look at my patterns and take a look at my choices. And when I step back in, I'm gonna step back in as the real me, the neutral me, the peaceful me, the loving me, the one that's not afraid to get hurt because I can't get, I cannot be hurt by love. The only, the old software can. It was defective. It was malfunctioning. And this new update that we're all receiving energetically is about us reclaiming our royal energy. You know, I did this meditation, Christine and I, who is our sound healer for the Quantum Revolution Tour, we did a meditation for our I am train, training. And one of our tactics in the I am training was as we're learning how to move in and out of these programs is we created a I am meditation for everyone. And we used sound and we used light language and we used a conversation from higher self. And we embedded it in this 12 minute meditation and my gift for my classroom was to listen to this, listen to this meditation, and then as soon as it's done, stop the video, and then write a note to yourself on your phone from your higher self, because you will be in your higher self after you listen to this frequent, these frequencies. And when you get scared and alone, remember who you are. Remember that this is just a game. Give yourself something special that you can read when you get triggered or when you get scared or when you get worried or when you're in doubt. And read it back to yourself out loud. Activate your throat chakra, which is the reflection of your solar plexus. It's like this and it's like this. And what happened from that meditation was so cool because two people started speaking light language during the meditation. Now what is light language? It is your higher self speaking. So that was an awesome confirmation for Christina and I and Jasper who put our visual show together because what we knew is that if we spoke through the channel of higher self, then you would speak back. If I speak to you as your higher self, you're going to speak back because you know who you are. So that was brilliant and it was wonderful and it was a huge confirmation of where we are. It is about letting go to what you think you can't do. Your toolbox is even bigger than you can imagine. You can all speak light language and what is light language? It is the voice of higher self, but the voice of higher self 
is one of a healer, is one of a knower, is one of a seer, is one of a guide. So just by speaking it or writing it or signing it, you are literally awakening other people's light inside of them and reminding them of who they are. So that was fantastic and that's what's happening. All you have to do is step in. Step into who you're becoming and let go of the past. So that is all I have for this month, our, our channeled expression, me and my higher self, to you and your higher self. And I urge you all to take this month and take a stroll versus a run. Stop and smell the roses, stop and play. Stop and surrender often and engage less. Make your choices based on your heart, not your mind. And love everyone like it's your last day on earth. That will help you integrate all of your software for this month. All right, so I have a couple announcements and they are awesome, obviously. We have our last US tour of this year, possibly for the next three years, on September 27th weekend which is a three-day event, which is our Quantum Revolution Tour. And I am excited to announce that I will be personally teaching every single person in that room two techniques for quantum healing. You will all leave completely certified and having access to all potentials, all worlds, all parallel realities. And I'm going to teach you guys in less than an hour how to shift yourself into the reality that you choose, and then I'm gonna show you how to live it out, because that is the secret. We all can shift into worlds. We all can use our energy to heal this now moment, but who are we in the next now moment that demonstrates the last moment? Who you are after that moment is going to be whether or not when you leave our revolution tour, that you're going to have everything you've ever wanted start showing up instantly. And I promise, and I guarantee, that every single person who comes and drops in and accepts their new updates through awareness, understanding, and guidance, that they will leave completely, completely as creators, not as receivers, not as players, not as participants. You guys will be creators. You already are. You don't need us, but we have these cheat codes. We have these biohacks. We have this understanding, and through sound, light, and quantum technologies, we're going to be able to hold space for you for three days to step in and out, in and out, all through play. Play of light, sound, music, dance, celebration. That is actually your shortcut. Celebration, party, dance, play, laugh. These are all things that integrate you faster than any amount of study any amount of work. You can't integrate through work, you integrate through surrender. So I hope you guys join us. If you are on the fence, please come because I'm gonna show you what the field of possibilities actually is. And I'm gonna show you how to step in and out of your reality anytime you need to recalibrate your program. So that you, when you step in, you become the writer of your program, you became the game creator, you become the director, the actor, and the editor. Not just the co-star or the extra it is your turn. And we cannot wait to be able to take you through this three day experience, our last tour in the US. We're doing it in Kansas City, why? Because it's safe. Safe relationships heal you, right? Safe places inspire creativity. You need a blank slate. Can't get more of a blank slate than the, the heart chakra of the United States. So I hope you guys join us. Our tickets are on sale for $177 on our website, quantumrevolutiontour.com. And I would urge you guys, if you have not booked your room yet, those uh, Quantum Revolution prices uh, go back up to full price after September 5th. And I'm not sure what those rooms cost, but they're much cheaper if you reserve them now. You can find that code on our website as well. If any of you guys are interested in doing the IM training with me and you haven't started yet, don't worry. That is a a this self enrolling process you start at the beginning and you can be completely coached through so you can start the I am training at any time otherwise I'll see you in my weekly classrooms on Facebook uh, quantum life Tika or I'll see you next uh, next month for second Sunday as we move into September so take this opportunity for this month to move slow and gracefully and become the leader and the chooser of your reality
Thank you guys so much for joining me and I will see you all tonight who are in the IM training for a live question and answer because I know you guys all have questions. That is gonna be at eight o'clock tonight, central time in our IM classroom and I will see you all there. Thanks for joining me.